Oh, this has got to be one of the most beautiful maps in the world. Mm. This gives it all away. Having Alexandria right here on the ocean. Just gives it all away. And what a fine it is. Yes. yes. Isaiah 19. Someone asked me to discuss Isaiah 19. I said, no, please, you discuss it. I have now changed my mind. We will discuss it. Burden of Egypt. A burden is a physical. Uh, Behold, the issue rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come upon, come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. So, the body, the burden, the heart shall melt. All right, so uh, when it says the idols of Egypt shall be moved, I want you to think about, of course, museums, right? Now, here, idols of India, you know, sacred Hindu goddesses and goddesses, statues and idols, right? So, you know, go through, you know what these are. Now, imagine that uh, once upon a time, all right, these were all in India, and you know, think about what has happened since they've been uh, subjugated. How do you want to say? Uh, is India Lower Egypt? Right? Is it, look it, the northernmost, the northernmost is Lower Egypt. Now, that's not saying India. That's just saying Lower Egypt is the northernmost. Now, what about... Now, ignore the Indo India part for a second. So, is India Upper Egypt? Now, we'll go... Upper Egypt is the southern portion of Egypt. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. So... We've come to this idea, what if Egypt is not right next to each other, or, you know, upper and lower connected, that if they're in different areas, because this map, it gives it all away. Why would there be an Alexandria here at the end of a river, a major river, just like it's said to be in Africa? Yet in Africa, there's no sign of the library at all. If we figured out where this place was, would there be a library there? And you can see all the places that he went. It's, 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 it's just amazing to see this. Now, when we think about India, all right, Is the Indus River, the Nile? And all kinds of people have posed this question, even to the extent like we saw here. Is Egypt India? So they literally, nothing to do with nobody. It's just simple quora. Okay. So I want you to think about this, because remember, they went to the land of Shinar. And then upper lower Egypt and Aswan, stretching to Aswan. And, uh, again, there's a place in Asia that's on the Mekong. Uh, uh, it's just not Aswan. 
I'm not going to get into that. That's that's a little here nor there. Let's look at the scripture again. It says, I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother and every one against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. All right. Just stick with me for a while. All right. I'll connect it where you want it to go. But I'm, it's it's only because I want to use this book, not because our beliefs. Now, for some reason, I like to ask weird questions sometimes. Are there Negroes in India? survey says <laughs> and, and it comes back oh yeah yeah we want to the cities Sidious and the hab she hab -shis. and um this newish we've heard the cities before but haven't really looked into it so we're gonna open it and look and see what some of it says and if you say it fast, it sounds like SETI. 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 City. SETI. Said hi. Said hi. SETI. Said hi. Uh, is. Oh, those black people. And no, they're Negroes. I have already typed in Negroes of India. So we should expect to see Negroes. It's known as the Shidi, the City, the Sari. Or an ethnic minority group uh where have we heard that before inhabiting where we have heard that before pakistan and india they are primarily descended from the bantu people so primarily so again this becomes not that hard we're all children of shem if these negroes over here are e1 b1 something then obviously like people have been trying to say, for me, it wasn't the time. Like people have been trying to say, you know, we should be somewhere close to that as well. Especially concerning, considering, and this is why I always blow it off, considering the acts of uh, lamentations, lament, to lament, the lamentation acts, what they did to us or the daughters of Zion and the maidens of Judah. Okay? Whether you understand that or not, that's either the production of you and me or these people right here. Now, if you somehow escaped that, which would probably be them, because they are exactly where the Babylonians said that they put them in the stand countries and in India. Pakistan and India. And they were placed there in the what? The Medes came down and that's what we've been reading over a few years. So it's a they descend from the primarily descended from the Bantu. Well, we don't really know that. That's what they're saying. That's what they say of some of us, too. Of the Zang, Zanjai, medieval Muslims, right? So, again, that's Arabs putting us into this or that, or however you want to look at it. If the Assyrians sit there and say, we have Muslim belief for this or that, and we saw what, what happened with the Fulani. Because the Arabs came in, the Fulani changed their... Uh, their 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 belief system so it says Mizanjai of south east africa most of whom came to the indian subcontinent through the arab slave trade hmm they're slaves like us others arrived as merchants sailors or indentured servants which just means slaves because the laws change and mercenaries now, the same thing from here in America. So, but the problem is here in America, they played that Jim Crow law. So, again, even 
and, and, and it's after slavery, and they play the indentured servant stuff, and they play the buffalo served soldier stuff, and all those people were treated the exact same during the Jim Crow laws, I mean, uh, era. Okay, so, you think about that, they are, they're, there are conflicting hypotheses of the origin of the city. Of course, why not? Same conflicting origin of, of, of the African American? I see a pattern here. So we don't really need any more of this. We, we know what's going on. All right. So the Indians and the Pakistan people got us under their custody the same way the Indians here did. And then the those who are in control now, right? Whether it's of one kind or if it's a mixture of of uh, council, whatever, right? The, the hidden, uh, how do we say? It? We should say that something of the sorts of the right modern Nicaea, right? It's the council. So when we go over here and we start looking at the city people, you know, um, it's interesting because you know, look how they look and think about how we look. So clearly, we got the better end of the deal. However you want to look at it, again, it's, it's, it's their oppressor economically versus our oppressor economically and again in the economics the trickle down effect so as we go a little bit now i wonder if the the, the, the very dark hindu people well it's interesting because you have very dark indians right uh, everybody wonders if the very dark indians have mixed with the uh afro people all right so again that then poses the question to some of the very dark uh, Hindu people uh, intermix with, with black people and that why, how they got so dark. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Remember the Zondervan definition of ham. The dark races, not the Negro. Okay. So we'll go further with this as the Habshis was brought up, but then they just give you the circulation back to the city, uh, right? That's that even more marginalized. <laughs> so then you, you type it in into Google and search for images, and they're like, "Okay, we'll give it to you." Uh, and so is that image of Denzel, right? <laughs> Mississippi Masala. All right. So and then Indian race is about. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So, again, we being kept in this shoebox, we have no idea about the shoebox that they are being kept in. Now, to get back to the scriptures, I, I will put Egyptian against Egyptian. Now, again, you have your beliefs. I'll get to your beliefs in a second. America is Egypt. We will get to that. There's this, I say beliefs because what percentage of people actually study? If I see a bird in the sky and I think it's an eagle, that's just my opinion. Until I go and examine the bird that I saw. If people just see some stuff and they just say some stuff, that's just them saying stuff. And, and not to keep bringing this guy up, but there are very few people like UB News. This is why I say this man has been on this for years. He is the master at this subject. So, because everybody, listen, even the scholars that he might cite are part of other groups that have biases. So, they're not even completely honest. So now, 
we'll get to this brother versus brother. And we, I want to get down to five. Now, the spirit of Egypt shall fail. The heart of Egypt shall melt. The back of Egypt shall get the burden. The spirit of Egypt shall fail in the mist, and I shall destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And the Egyptian I will give over to the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, saith the Ishi, the Ishi of hosts. Now, and the waters shall fail from the sea, and the rivers shall be wasted and dried up. Now, let's get back on this motorboat over here. We want to do. The, we want to get all the way to the cruel Lord. So here we have the city, or uh, the Habis is however it's pronounced. And then we say the foreign crown ruling India. Now the British Ra, or Raj, the realm, the kingdom, the realm, the state, the empire, was the rule of the. British crown on the Indian subcontinent and was also called crown rule of India or direct rule of India. Now, I'm sure everybody's saying Egypt is America can see the exact same thing that happened to America happened to India. And just like you have slaves being brought here who happen to be the people that match what's in the book, the same thing going over there with those people too. The city in Habis, however that's pronounced. They had a cruel master and then another cruel master came over them. Now listen, this is what it, I believe. I, mean, I believe this is what the scripture is talking about. The hand of the cruel Lord is America and the fierce king shall rule over them is India. That's my opinion. Now, I can back it up. Let's go backwards in these scriptures and we can see exactly what's going on. Now, the Egyptian against the Egyptian. Now, Hindu civil war. We just left this, the British Raj. We go to the Hindu civil war. So, Hindus well, uh, excuse me, the Indian continent went into violence, brother against brother, when Muslim stuff was introduced to it. And then you got the Hindus versus the Muslim. All right. So, again, what is the Civil War of India? Uh, I don't know if this one's uh, a vast region covering some of the country's poorest states. Orissa. Jaharland, Jahark, and I can't pronounce that. Uh, it's become the theater of civil war pitting and determined Maoist revolutionaries against the national and state uh, paramilitary forces. I'm not, they're not telling you what year that is. So, what caused the war between the often British policies such as the 1919, 19, again, this is why I say this first one. Is America. It is the, the crown sending their 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 arms over here, their warriors over here. With British thing over on India, I mean, you know, I don't even. We, we can read about the fight. I mean, the, the American wars lasted so long versus the you know the, for them to get into to India was. You know, lick and split in comparison. You know, um, let's read it. British policies, such as the 1909 decision to give Indian Muslims a separate electorate from Hindu in their local elections. So you see, they figured out a way to pit them against each other, just like they pit the Indians of America against each other. Uh, 
Now, again, not to take that out of context, we'll get to the Indian stuff, because before there were any colonists, the Indian was going against himself. It was Egyptian versus Egyptian, Hindu versus Hindu, American Indian versus American Indian. Now, the Muslim stuff has been in the country. Now, again, you have to sit there and say, in India, how long has, has Muslims been in India? That's going to be the start of the actual conflict. This is when it gets to the Civil War. So whenever that comes, right, whoever comes in and preaches it and gets everybody off of Hinduism and off of Jainism and off of Zaoism, that's when these, like, these, these battles start happening between tribe versus tribe. Now, I haven't researched this in depth. This was a whimsical thought, and then all the pieces fell into place. Now, when we look at this first one, when we sit here and say uh, uh, upper and lower, oh, where, do you, where my upper lower stuff go? I'm going to be there. Here. Now, again, Upper Egypt is the southern portion. So I believe India. Where all the mega statues are is upper. And the lower is the northernmost, and of course, we're in North America. Now, when we turn the migration map the zones of migration or the flat earth map when we turn it just a little bit you got india on top of america there are some things in between but you know siberia china things like that so you know I, I I wouldn't want to say you have to use your imagination. I, I like to think it's it's piecing itself together very 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 easy. You know, I, you already know of the idols of India. You know, you know, I'm sure there's wizards there, just like there's wizards here. Um, when you go into shaman, they show you uh, first. They want to tell you about. Uh, the Mongols and the uh, what do they call uh, M Mama? Yeah, I just type it. Then you gotta look for it. Nah, 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 I don't feel like it. Manchu, they want to tell you about the Manchu. Forgot it for a second. So, and then they want to tell you they would put the deer horns on their head, you know, just. So again, man, if, if, if these little, uh, you know, the Manchu was big at one point, all right? So at one point they had the shamans, the shamans were the wizards. Then uh, the Mongols were big at one point, one point they had this, uh, the, uh, the wizards and shit, you know, but again, you talk about Egypt, you already know in the Bible they were able to change their staffs into, into snakes as well. You're like, uh... So then we get into from the Hindu Civil War. Now we're going to get into America is Lower Egypt, the upper part. That's how backwards this shit is. So then it's idols of pre Columbian America. Okay. Uh, and these subjects, again, everybody can see what I typed in. All you don't got to do is just get to this part and pause it or something like that you can see it for yourself i don't you know suggest dwelling on any other shit but you know it exists everybody that has any knowledge of cortez knows that when they defeated the indians what they would do was they would bury the stuff that was too large to put on the ships and ship back this is why i state that the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. 
that it moved right into the museum. Every one of them. So, you know, everybody's got the right to their own opinion. And I'm just showing, you know, some of my opinion. And, uh, what you notice, they don't show you anything of North America. But you know, there's all kinds of stuff in North America. So, this is under pre Columbian, so I had to change it up a little bit. So, I was a pre colonial America, and then they still really want to go back to pre Columbian stuff. They don't really want to follow what I'm actually asking. You ask a direct question and they're like, let us subvert you over here instead. And what are we looking at? Pre-Columbian stuff. But I said pre-colonial America. And they're still showing me pre-Columbian stuff. Like nothing's been dug up in North America. Nothing's been dug up in Canada. Come on. Come on. So then even the related searches, we don't want to talk about the idols of Indian. Ah, whatever. We already know they exist. So, I just thought I'd just keep moving through here. All right, so because they didn't want to show any of the statues that are pre, um, I thought I'd show you the Union Station statue. Once I went to Washington, and this is one of the things that really stood out the most, because the idea of these statues, you don't see anybody that resembles these images. Um, so here you, it's called the Union Station Paladins, Paladins. And of course, there's Roman Legionnaire statues. Now, remember what's said. This is the truth. What comes out of their mouth lies. Look at the symbols. And look at the statues. So, Legionnaire statues, Palladian statues. So, this is some place that was important to them. Now there's the Circe's statue. Circe's is a fucking witch. So now we're gonna start making this all make sense with this location, Washington. Now, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of information about American Indian wars and American Indians fighting each other. What Native American tribes fought each other? And the list is actually long. This just gives you some short stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't really tell you too much. But there is some things that do give you the information. And if you don't want to look up the information, but you're interested and you want to watch the information, plenty of people taken on this subject in video form. Within this year, we have, uh, excuse me, within a year, Apache Terra, the Comanche, the War of Extermination. Let us go back here real quick. And what does that say? Uh, Egyptian against Egyptian. Everybody's going to fight. His brother, everybody's what? Neighbor against neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. So we're going to see this all throughout here. Over and over. And all you have to do is just be interested. And if you have no interest, then let it go. So then that's going to get to. These are a little out of order, but the Egyptians will I give into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king shall rule over him. And then, you know, Vincent's always been hitting me with this song. All right, so you have a song called Royals by Lord 
right? Woo! Uh, I've never seen a diamond in the flesh, right? In the real life, I've never seen a diamond. I cut my teeth on wedding rings in the movies, so whatever. Not proud of my address. I'm torn up town, no postcode envy, right? So, all these things they want, right? But again, what is it? Let me be your ruler. You can call me Queen B. Who, who are the people that lived in the beehives? That's, that's where it gets weird, because it's always in our face. And if we don't know, then it's just meaningless, right? I don't even know what ways we found it last time. I don't know, I mean, this is better than last time. It's just conical shapes helps wash Ruth Wayne wash or something. So. They were horizontal tube hives made out of mud and was dried into large cylinders which were stacked on top of each other. Similar construction of hives was seen used, still see used in Azerbaijan and Iran. What can we learn from the ancient Egyptian practice? The only place this is besides the two places they just mentioned is where hmm? Mekong River there's a couple other places hmm? see they just gonna say Pinterest but you know and what can you throw down on that versus you know the world dot org <laughs> beehive adobe houses the ancient city of Haran and where do we have adobe houses so this kid's like now imagine before the great how do you say the great captivity of all of them being removed from the old world except from India and pushed and when I say this this is the, the great walk across the Bering Strait right excuse me we'll get to that so they, they took them from all these places because they build in the same damn style all over the world so, then it say there the the Egyptians I will give over to the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them. Now think, I just showed you in India they have Negroes enslaved from a slave trade still looking like they in captivity in america you have the same story you know because you live it and a fierce ruler over them okay now the fierceness of the so both the indians practice slavery enslaving negroes and the Hindu practice slavery, enslaving Negroes. Can you see it? Now, I say, one is Upper Egypt, 
which would be India because that's the lower place. And then, yeah, I don't know why this shit's opposite. And then lower Egypt is the northernmost. And again, we stamp North America, right? I mean, and look at India. It's 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 roughly the southernmost, right? Point beside of of, of Asia, is, I believe. So, what we got next on here? We got some. So let's look at the oppressor. So, is that the last thing? I mean, this is the next thing. Yeah, beehives. Babylon. This is added material. Babylon defeated Egypt. So. No matter what timeline you give us. Just remember Babylon defeated Egypt. So the Hollywood Walk of Fame. There is a plaque connected to it. It has to do with Babylon. It was hard to word the right words in to get it, but somebody else had it. It has to deal with the Kodak Theater. It's called Babylon Court. Okay. Now, one thing leads to another. So the Babylon Court plaque. Okay. And now the Babylon Court plaque is right here. And then we're like, what is this about? Okay. The Babylon Court. The monumental archway is, excuse me, and elephants above you are inspired by the film set of W.D. Griffith, Griffith's historic 1916 film, Intolerance, perhaps the most famous film set ever built. It became the first tourist attraction related to the movie business in Hollywood. During the filming, over 1,000 extras were used, and horse-drawn chariots raced atop the battlements. The set remained standing for many years after filming was completed near the intersection of Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard. Now, I've seen videos about this where people question uh, was this stuff even Hollywood set? Uh, I, I believe even John Levi did a video about talking about that maybe two years ago. And then this leads, of course, to what they said is film called Intolerant. Now, when we learn about Intolerance, it's a... Uh, it's, it's basically the answer to everything, right? So here's the storyline, it's four films, four distinct but parallel stories. Intercut with increasing with increasing frequency as the film builds to a climax that demonstrate mankind's, mankind's persistent intolerance through the, throughout the ages. All right. So again, the stories are parallel but they're supposed to cover 2,500 years. So what we want is right here, the ancient Babylonian story depicts the conflict between Prince Belshazzar, Belshazzar of Babylon and Cyrus the Great of Persia. The fall of Babylon is a result of intolerance arising from a conflict between devotees of two rival Babylonian gods, Bel, Marduk, and Ishtar. Her! Again, she's all, her! And uh, right? Isn't that what Will Smith is singing about? Who he's getting jiggy with it? All right, so uh, on YouTube, you can find Intolerance. There's, uh, well, this segment. You can find the whole film. 
it's two hours, something long, two, whatever, but you want the Babylon section for this, uh, if you're interested, you know, yeah, two hours and 46 minutes long. So this is the most spectacular scene of the Babylon section, and this is why they were arguing that this shit, it couldn't have been a set. It had to be real. Because, and I'm going to argue this right now, the amount of people standing on that to think that this is just a stage, and to think that wood could support all those people like that, I, I, that's outrageous. It's outrageous. Here's another one in black and white where you can see all those people that are standing on that. That's not wood, that's actual cement. So, you know, and then they said, you know, the set was, you know, there for a period of time. So, I mean, that's wild. I mean, you could just drive up to it and just like, you know, climb on it, walk around and stuff. I mean, it just depends on what pieces were left out for however many years. Like they said, you know, um, But again, this is that's that's the movie magic, right? To make you believe it's fake. I, I don't know. You know, clearly some parts are, but you know, again, the the question becomes the set itself. Oh, the set scene. Yeah. It's it's. Just remember, when, once you have so many people standing on something, that's, you know, 50 people can't get in one elevator. And wood is just not going to support all of the people, you know. Or, or we'd all be having deck parties with, 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 with a thousand people. We don't. So. You know, with uh, with this kind of stuff in mind, um, you can kind of see where this all leads. Uh, so, over here on intolerance, it tells us uh, well, okay, there it is, right here. So. It cuts down the stories, right? The Judean story is the pagan, uh, right? the, the prince, the people of the prince added their own prince as the, as the people don't want to read. Babylonian story, the fall of the Babylonian Empire, and they call this the Battle of Opus. Uh, to Persia, right? So, Egypt was defeated by the Babylonians, the Babylonians were defeated by the Persians, and this bone's connected to that bone, the Battle of Opus, right? The last major military engagement be between the Achmedian Persians. Now remember, Persians still going, but that's just people waving the flag. The people, the blood, right? Think about this. Just like the dynasties of Egypt, it froze. Just like the dynasties of Egypt, once some different people come in and start trying to change everything, but we won't be part of that no more. Right? And then you get rebellions and stuff, people trying to push them out. You gotta come in and keep everything the same or everybody's gonna have it. So, The Achmedian and the Neo Babylonian Empire, which took place during the Persian invasion of Mesopotamia. Now, from, we'll just keep going. And at the time, Babylon. Was a mate was the last major power in the Western uh, Western Asia. I would say it's more like Central Asia. Uh, 
that was not yet under Persian control. Now, battles fought near the strategic river side city Opus, located north of the capital city of Babylon. And we already know that it's in the Stan country. It's the Trans Oxus. It's not no Iraq. Now, the next thing that happens is all right, so if we sit here and understand what happens, we have Egypt be, being defeated by Babylon, Babylon being defeated by the Persians. Then we know what's next. That is reign of Cyrus. So that's captivity for us. And this is how all these people get divided. And then the Bible says the time of the Greeks, excuse me, says the Persian Mede Empire. And it's going to be the time of the Greeks. And so I come to the conclusion, which means it's not true. It's me for guessing again. Okay. That. You got the Medes plus the Persians plus the Babylonians equals the daughter of Babel. Okay. And this is this is why I'll say this because if you say who are the Medes today, they're gonna say it's the Ab Azerbaijan, Kurdistan, and parts of Kerman Kermanshah. Okay, so Hell no, that ain't all the people of media. We call our TV media. We call our radio media. There's no way the Medes don't have something to do with this country if we call all this stuff media. Then you take it a little bit further. And if you know, you know you don't. They got a country called Median, right? But, you know. In Spanish, two L's make a Y sound. So it's more like Maesian. Maesian, right? It is. Again, if two L's make a Y, and a Y is sometimes an I, it's just meaty in Colombia. This is, this is the same people shit. So, you know, then you say, who are the Persians today? And they say, well, most Persians live in Iran, right? So I'm just like, oh, come on, man. We've been, we've been down this road. Persians are Afro people, so we know this is Jafes children. So what we have on this is we have proxies or stand-ins, right? So then it starts to say, well, we're... We're the Babylonians, right? But before that, since we're in Iran, and since we've already been doing it, she was like, are there Negroes in Iran? And they're like, yeah, they're called Afro-Iranians. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so here's the Zanjai people again coming up, right? And this is right, just off the cuff. We didn't, I didn't plan this. So, you know, again, we're the Babylonians, right? Oh, like Negroes of Iran, right? So then you start to see some of this stuff, right? Uh, you see some of this Moor stuff, Afro-Iranian, they dress like Moors. So you can see they got a better deal, or they accepted the side deal. Right? Black Persians, and they show you Asian people, or Turkic people, I'm not even going to get into it. There you go, Black Persian. So... See when you type that in, you know, it, the Afro, and then you just go to this, right? Uh, or the, the more up here, you know, all these cult members. So you say black Persians, they show you the, the, the real Persians were black. The real history, oh, that's realhistory.com. I respect that channel. 
I mean, that, uh, that website, he's got some good info. You can make a, a living off of rebroadcasting all the pictures you done brought up and tagged, you know, if you're researching them, if that they're true. And, you know, a lot of the Gentile reuse these images and rename them stuff that, that aren't true um, on purpose. So then we got to go over to TikTok and uh, figure this one out. All right. Evening godless sodomite. Kneel before your god, Babylon. Evening godless sodomite. Kneel before your god, Babylon. I guess I wanted to time those together. I'm sorry. I forgot. Evening godless sodomite. Kneel before your god, Babylon. Making me the highest paid megalomaniacal boy king in all of Babylon. You see, if you go and visit the very home of the Oscars, where they hold it each year, you can see a plaque on the wall that says, The Babylonian Court. The camera shows you the stage, and you see an unmistakable Tower of Babel embedded into the design. Outside of the Kodak Theater, you have the gates to Ishtar, and you have Babylonian gods put on the outside of the gate. They have the exact elephants. They have the same exact gate of Ishtar. They have the same exact Babylonian gods over the top of the gates. A lot of people come up here, and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. you and you don't even know it i i can't get away from this he tells you out of his own mouth and people this is the evidence none of these people read is all by belief which means they brainwashed and brain trained we have the ability to read and when we choose not to read this is what you get. Now again, the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince. So when Daniel says the people of the prince, these Babylonians or daughter of Babylon, they are, they are created from these actions of these and these and these. This is why they say these families are from Babylon. They don't say these families, these 13 families are from Sumeria. They don't say shit like that. They don't say, they're from Mesopotamia. They don't say anything like that. They say they are Babylonian families. And what are they controlling? Companies. All right? And the infrastructure. And park and recreation. So, and again, all these police are businesses, whether we understand that or not, they're businesses. So, they hire and they fire. It's a business. Fire department, it's a business. You don't pay them, they ain't coming to work, just like everybody else. First begotten of the dead, the people of the prince, the prince of the kings of the earth. And unto him, all right, washed us from our sins, the conquest of other people's lands. In his own blood, what does it say? I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive. And I have the keys to hell and death. He, he's not saying he got the, the keys to no gate that they call St. Peter. St. Peter's gate is hell. We are a people that don't want to read. Fair use. I'm thankful to the Oscar gods. The other names of the gentlemen are all gods as far as a, as far as a category concerned. When you get this little golden statue, you become a star. In the Egyptian culture, they also 
had a little statue that represented the god Ptah. And see, when an Egyptian king died, it was believed that his spirit went into the belt of Orion, and he then became a star. Up until 1999, the Oscars was held at a building called The Shrine, which was founded by William Florence and Walter Fleming, two high-ranking Scottish Rite Freemasons. Hollywood has long been interested in Freemasonry. Gene Autry, John Wayne, Nat King Cole, Duke Ellington, C.C. DeMille, Clark Gable, Walt Disney, Oliver Hardy, you name it, the list goes on. Many celebrities have come out and admitted their connection to Freemasonry. You can see the checkered floor, you can see the archways, you can see the sun motif in the background. All of these are letting you know exactly who owns this organization. While the world is wandering after all of these celebrities, we would do well to heed the very advice from Jesus' lips himself. In Luke 4 verse 8 it says, For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shalt thou serve so you know using this clip let him get his word in all right so this is not to say that everybody is coming from europe is considered to be this or that it's saying that uh these families that are in control versus the king that was in the uh, uh, the cruel lord and the king, the hand of the cruel lord and a fierce king over them. So this necessarily isn't 1492. This would be later when this king is sending all these people over here for war and conquest. Again, when you look at the Micmac, we're, we're going to, we saw already, but again, we can see that there's a certain time period. They go over there and say, claim the land. No more of this befriending stuff. Now, for the term Babylonians, which I don't believe is really right here, right? Uh, these celebrities are usually used okay so again it's the celebrities being told to say these things or even if they just come out and say them themselves these are the highest paid some of the highest paid actors i mean i'm sure they can remember a paragraph for to, to say the speech even spruce it up a bit you can't help jim, john Car uh, jim carrey coming out and saying that spoiled prince or spoiled king of babylon oh you saw the might of babylon all, all, over and over again and they're telling you they are using just like in egypt oh okay so you got a land that is practicing egypt You got a land that, excuse me, you got a land that is Egypt. There is a practice of Babylonian gods here. What do you see when you go to the, uh, what, the, the, the Grand Canyon? What is that? Is it the, uh, the dam, right? And the eagles with the wings pointed up. It, it's, it's always in our face, but we can't accept it. So I, I, I love these first five verses because it, it gives it away. Now, what everybody's been waiting for, the Native American warfare in the, conf, uh, in the West, conflict among the Southwest Indians. Mm -hmm. So what we get here is uh, Indians fighting in the Southwest during the 15th and 16th centuries, uh, followed by the morning war pattern prevalent among the eastern woodland indians like their eastern counterparts both sedentary pueblo indians and nomadic semi-nomadic tribes such as the navajo warred to avenge the murder of their kinsmen 
in important ways, however, warfare in the southwest west differed from the practice in the eastern part of North America. I'm going to go back over here because you got to iron this out. I will but set the Egyptian against the Egyptian. They will fight everyone against his brother. Okay? This is the same thing. Just... We just have to go and look about the Muslim Hindu wars. It's just a little bit later in time. You can't help but notice that when it says this cruel hand and this fierce king is seen to be the same land, just different time periods. So, go a bit further. Now, the first semi sedimentary Native Americans raided both other semi nomadic tribes and the Pueblo Indians in the effort to acquire material goods through plunder. More importantly, the Pueblo Indians lived in and near the Rio Grande Valley. There's often fought wars that were more similar to the European conflicts than to the Woodland Indian blood feuds. Sim uh, so we're just going to skip down. This is where it always takes me to. Um, don't know why. The sedimentary Pueblo Indians of the Rio Grande, Rio Grande Valley likewise engaged in vengeance motive warfare that was common to kinship based societies Pueblo warfare was not however limited to blood feuds living in or near the densely populated location uh, populated but poor but resource poor rio grande valley pueblo and the waters shall fail from the sea and the river shall be wasted and dried up if you don't know what the indus river looks like it's just it's heavily polluted that's wasted and what did we just read right here the rio grande river dried up that just wrapped the package for me like this this, this is why it's, it's all desert. The, 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 the Rio Grande dried up, all right? Pueblo, I guess I won't say dried up, but here's again, again, how you live on a river and it's resource poor. Rio Grande Valley is the Rio Grande River. Pueblo tribes such as the Hopis, the Zuni, the Puros, the to Tewalas fought one another to secure control of the region's limited supply of arable land. Right? I'm put Egyptian versus the Egyptian, and they shall fight every one against his brother. So I don't think I have to try to use car salesmen to me shit on this. And I'm pretty sure now that I showed you, you got. Our Afro people enslaved in, or in captivity in India, in Pakistan. And this is showing us the four corners, isn't it? I don't know if we've seen it already. I don't know if other people showed it. I just started typing in some shit because this map gave it away. You can't sit there and say, <laughs> So and then the Bible was going to take it away with the other. Wait a second. I mean, a cruel oppressor. How cruel is he? Oh, he goes and kills other people with your name. <laughs> All right. Native names for military vehicles. Isn't that some crazy shit? And we're going to get you with the C-12 transport, right? This transport. I'm gonna try. Lake Huron, Huron Indians. All right. All right. And so, observation copter is called a 
Koa, and those were Indians too here. The Oot Indians we ripped. That's a utility aircraft, right? And the Little Bird, I don't know what Indians those are, but trust me, if I sit there and say Native American names, Black Hawk, we know who the Black Hawk is, right? Blackfoot, Black Hawk, Mohawk, utility helicopter, right? The Creek Trainer helicopter, right? The Apache Attack Chopper. Right? We've seen this all throughout the 80s, right? The Comanche Recon Attack Recon, my ass. The, the Comanche Attack Chopper. Right? Come on, there's more items? There's more? Right? We, I mean, everybody knows that one, right? What's Kane's son? They named him Enoch, right? But his name wasn't Enoch, it's Chinook, right? Let's go. All right? Did we get all these? We didn't get the Arapaho attack. Hell, who's the idiot that wrote these backwards? See what I tell you? Wikipedia was controlled by somebody intelligent and they were good at lying. And now the goddamn idiot child is in control. He got the car keys and he done he scratched a hole every panel, you know, burnt holes in the car seat on the interior, you know. It's a recon attack chopper, but this one is an attack recon chopper. This sounds like an important moment of a fertility spot. I would agree. I would agree. Okay, aircraft name by the Mohawk Observation. All right, so off the Mohawk people, isn't it funny? You're looking at an aircraft and the Mohawk people come up, right? The Seminole Utility Aircraft, right? The Missacaro Trainer. Ooh, that guy has some dark skin. Huh? What's he doing with his hair? That looks like some shit our people would do. Somebody better look this up, right? Uh, come on, man, we know that's going. Only those interested. Look at that. Mesca. Mes. Is these the, the people of Mesopotamia? Come on, clicky, clicky. What are you waiting for? I want to see why he's got that image that's of Apache. That's Apache. Okay. So, thought we was going to get into something. Where was it? Oh, back here. Right here. All right. So, Miss, that's Apache. Now, I guess I could have just read that right there. Right? Wah, wah. The Sioux helicopter, the Shawnee transport helicopter. It's the workhorse, right? Okay, the Choctaw transport helicopter. So again, how do you think these guys feel having their name being used as these choppers, hmm? as these planes? Oh, okay, these are by tribes or chiefs, and these are names by tradition. Okay, so again, Choctaw, here we go to Chinook. All right. So, fun is very interesting. Cheyenne, everybody's heard of Cheyenne. Attack Chopper. Iroquois Utility Chopper. Tare Heavy Lifting Chopper. I've never heard of that one. All right. Mojave Desert. All right, Mojave. So, Ha you see, you see. Uh, and the Lakota, and, and then you can choose the other ones. Sasakawai, 
Evans, Williams, Platt, Tomahawk. Why are these names here? Why is Williams on there if they supposed to be uh, Native American? Williams' name come out of Wel uh, Welsh. Why the Platte? Platte River. Okay. And why Evans? Ernest Evans. Kill. Kilmer, dog. Okay. There it is. Evan Ernest Evan. Okay. All right. So it's named after an Indian man. So this one probably is too. The James Williams is probably named after maybe an Indian with the last name Williams. Yeah, James Elliot Williams, 1930-1999, but they're not going to show a picture of him for some reason. So, why not? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure everybody wasn't expecting that. Uh, okay. So, maybe he's part Indian. Who knows? So, yeah, we just, same thing. I got it double clicked up. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, so here it says, and they shall turn the rivers far away. Okay, that's a diversion of rivers. And the brook of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds and flags shall wither. And again, I would say this is probably in both places. If you just going to keep going, the paper reeds by the brook. We already know the paper reeds come out of Asia. What we don't know about is the reeds that are down on the Rio Grande. They're gigantic. They're taller than men. By the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither and be driven away, no, and be no more. The fishers shall also mourn, and all they that cast angles into the brooks shall lament, and they that spread upon the net, uh, the nets upon the water shall languish. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, that's linen, and they that weave networks shall be confounded, and they, now, you understand what just happened? Now, that didn't necessarily happen in India. Now, what we have here is when this killing and murdering happened here, they stopped all the loon process and then they started wearing animal skin. No. So odd as it may be, even the Indus River is drying up. Remember, it's fed from snow disposition from the northwest of the Himalayas. So all the snow that melts off there feeds the Indus River, right? Is the Indus River drying up? Its, ir its waters irrigate the crops and that feed Pakistan. Yet the Indus is suffering. Parts of the river are drying up. Wealthy landowners are diverting its water to irrigate their own crops, leaving little water for small farmers.
Boys here, right here. I will give them over to a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them. Now, again, they're still under that condition, and again, we are still under that condition. So, all right, I had to clean up some of this scrubby scrubby. All right, so, uh, and they shall be broken in their purposes thereof, all all that make sluices and ponds for fish. And again, we saw the rich diverting the water for farms, so you're not going to have high fish in those areas. We know there's, uh, you know, to study this in America, you know, I'm sure it's going to match. Uh, and like I'll show you what I think is the difference. It's it's right in here. Surely the princes of Zon are fools. The counsel of their wise counselor of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. Now again, that can be said for India. That can be said for the American Indians. Again, because the sons of the leaders. Where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know that the issue of hosts have proposed, what the issue of hosts have proposed on Egypt. And the princes of Zoan are become fools. The princes of Nof are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt, even they that are stay of the tribes thereof. Now, why is it written like this? Why is Zone talked about the princes? And Zone talked about the Pharaoh, but Nope ain't talked about the Pharaoh. Now, let me show you what I figured out. All right. Now, Zone isn't going to be found under Zone. We have to go to Esor, and when we look for Zone, it's going to be Tussoing, a place in Egypt. Now, Tussoing, we're not going to find it under Tussoing. We're going to find it under so on, so on. Drop the T or change the Z to an S. And now we have so on. Now the, in, the book comes up, the Indian princes and their states. It's right there. So do we have to go into the book? I mean, whatever. Amen. It's right there. So they're going to keep on giving us, oh, we don't know uh, so on, but, you know, the India is the place to still have these princes. Same place. Now, don't get, oh, the Middle East got princes, but Middle East don't got no map showing Alexander built Alexandria, the great library on the coastline next to them. But Egypt's in the Middle East. Shut up, that shit. I'm showing you one Egypt, this man, other man, I'm showing you Egypt for years. So, now, just so you're sure, Paro Indian, India. So when we go over here, one more time, I forgot it's on the same thing, right? Oh, verse 11, the councils of Pharaoh. So everybody can see it. Pharaoh is Paro. This is just English muckety boo 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 goo. Goop. It's Paro. Paro is in India. Look at this. Another giant figure. What is this? Show me that one.
These are lovely. Just interesting. Oh, there's that picture. It's an Instagram video. Some kind of outside bar. Maybe some rooftop stuff. So that's where we get to. And then when I typed in Paro, India, then they started showing me town in Bhutan. But of course, that is where it's at. So India, Bhutan, the Himalaya mountain system. Uh, it's all right there. So now we got to get to Nope and the princes of Nope. And there are no princes of Nope. Nope. So we have to go back and we have to look at the word nope. And so here's the word nope. And everybody pay attention. They say you just got to spell it with a PH, not an FE. So we go back and we say, how about with a PH? Oh, excuse me. We go back one and then here's a, here's a FE. And we go princes of nope. Princes of Nof, Princes of India. So they want to tell you the princesses first, right? You know, indigenous women of America. Right? Oh. That's funny. Princesses of India. Right? I said prince, princes. I didn't show me princesses. Right? But nothing to do with Nof. So yeah, click on this. Show me no only. They're like, maybe node. Maybe you're looking for node. Right? Embassy of East India doesn't say no poultry. No, that's not what we want. Uh, India, no political agent. Uh, yeah, that's not what we want. Uh, took them off the no. So nothing's coming up that makes sense. So we're going to change this and we'll just go. Uh, for instance, off there. I'm going to go N-O-P-H, because that's how it was. We're not going to find anything under here. India and its native princes. That's back on the other uh, zone. So, so that's not going to do us any good. So, we can always sit here and say, okay, uh, zone princes America. Oh, American India. Thank you for the assistance, robot. Right, okay. so nothing's gonna. I'm I'm sure nothing's gonna say so. I'm pretty sure it's the the Hindu the Hindu Indian princes. Okay. See, Son is. See now, when I typed in Son River, why didn't they say all this stuff? Because it's not in India; it's in Pakistan. <laughs> it's not funny. Oh, so, luckily, by typing in America, it's like, no, you want Pakistan. Oh, you can put N. So, there's the, the princes of song. Okay. So, let's see if we. So, you just saw I got lucky. Yeah, like, you know, we just got lucky. <laughs> Keep the fucking spell in America, bro. Oh, I'm losing my English. The rise and fall of Memphis. Nope. I do not believe that. I do not believe that they already know what's going. Okay, so when we get on Nope, it's not going to tell us up right. Nope, Upper Egypt. Now let's click on it. Oh my goodness, it's going to tell us the exact same thing that that said. We had to click on it first. And it's going to say, Nof used to be called Mof. And Mof is what? Memphis. Tina, see? Lord, I don't know. Okay. Well, back to the rise and fall of Memphis. Nof. This is Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. But I'm surprised they had that part right there. 
but it's in the concordance. It's not like it's really hidden. It just means there's somebody else that reads, but then they're going to go and say it somewhere else. So zone is in Pakistan and Nof is Memphis, America. So I don't really know what it takes to solidify it in the mind for the viewer because I don't know any of you individually. I don't know how much of the video you're actually focusing on. I mean, I have to focus nonstop. So I'm talking nonstop. Right? Pauses in between. But when you, when, you know, if you didn't think it was America, this should solidify it. If you didn't think it was India, with the slavery and everything else, Sown River should should solidify it for you. If that, then there's nothing I can do. Oh, wait, I can finish the scriptures. All right, all right, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get this done. All right, so I'm going to start from 11 again and read through. Surely the princes of Zone or Sone, India, the council of the wise counselor, counselors of Paro, India, is become brutish. How say ye? Unto far, Paro, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient king. Excuse me. Where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know that the issue of hosts hath purposed upon or proposed upon Egypt. What he has proposed upon Egypt? The princes of Son River, so they would be around the river, have become fools. The princes of Mof or Memphis are deceived. What is that? That's the U.S. treaties with the Cherokee and the other Indians. They have also seduced Egypt, even they that are stay of the tribes thereof. How about we go look up what the word stay mean? I bet that means those that are mingled into the tribes. They are seduced. Right? All we have to do is go to the five tribes. We know those are the Philistines. They're not the the actual Egyptians, but they are the sons of the Egyptians mingled with what the the, uh, the Canaanites, which means they are Egyptians as well. And then what would the Hindu princes be? So here we go, call uh, seduce, right? To facilitate, we gotta look that up, don't we? Oh, to stray, to err, to plant, to pant, to seduce, to stagger, to wander. That's interesting based on some of these videos that I've been watching about how alternate or waver between different opinions or action. So, by not being decisive in some actions, they lost a lot of stuff, right? Now it says here, where's the stay word? Even at stay. An angle by implication, a pinnacle, figuratively a chief with a uh, chieftain bulwark, chief corner, stay tower. So, meaning to turn an angle, a street, a corner. Oh, maybe like a way, a way of life. Maybe that's what we're looking at. Um. So, where are we at? Where are we? So, okay. So the the princes of Nof are deceived. They also have been seduced by uh, have also seduced. They have also seduced Egypt. Even 
they that are stay of the tribes, undecisive, have not chosen. Now, that's why some are labeled civilized tribe. Some got better deals, some got worse deals, some got no deals. Now, as we continue, the Ishi have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. Now, what what is mingled mean? Yeah, is 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 very clear what this is all about. They have mixed, especially with wine. See, now we all have heard these rumors of the liquor that was used to subdue the mind of the Indian before it was time to bargain. We all know about mixing to mingle. We all saw when we did the Philistine stuff that they were willing to intermingle openly with the caucus and change, right? We listened to the man say that half of our people wanted to act like this and keep to the old ways. Half our people wanted to uh, go the ways with, with, with they, they explained it as the caucus. And then they explained they intermingled with the white people and they said they didn't intermingle with the black people, yet there's many and many and many intermingled children from them. Of the, excuse me, of slaves. The leader of the, 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 the loudest advocate for, uh, uh, how would you say, what, what are we looking at? Um, Slave descendants, Miss Van, might just be the great great granddaughter of the Cherokee Chief Van. So, so that's just like Thomas Jefferson's children, right? So Chief Van had a Negro, had Negro children, and and he wasn't a Negro, and Thomas Jefferson had Negro children, and he wasn't a Negro. See how this is working. Uh, cause uh, mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. And that is so true, because what do they say? These reservations are running rampant with alcohol and with drugs. A lot of these reservations are well fed and taken care of. So they have nothing to do anymore. They're 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 going. To, I'll tell you what they're going through. They have to hunt. And with them not being able to hunt, it just drives them stir crazy. So that that's my idiot opinion. I don't know any of them. I'm just saying their culture was really based on hunting. They're the children of Nimrod. I mean, they're the brothers of Nimrod. Right? So, <clears throat> the great hunter, right? <clears throat> Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or the tail, that's the caucus, presumably, and the tail is us. Branch, brush may do. Branch or rush man. So these, I think these are metaphors for the different jobs people do in America. So this is why you don't have, like, uh, not to be weird or anything, they're on reservation. They're part of their own nation. I don't live by these reservations or say Oklahoma so I don't know how it is for tribal members to actually work or work outside of their tribe so I would assume it would be somewhere in those questions uh, you know versus you know now a lot of these tribes have casinos and stuff like that which you know I mean are, are they working at the casino or are they hiring outside employees you know, it really doesn't matter. We're just trying to figure out what matches the scripture. Now, again, looking at the 16, 17, from, from, the, from the Indian on Indian Wars to the uh, Indian 
French wars and so forth, you can see this over and over again, portrayed uh, so much in every movie about Indians. Um, neither shall there be any work. Now, Egypt, Assyria, Israel, blessed. In that day, past, present, or future, shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the issue of host, which he shaketh over it. The land and the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Now this one, I'm, I don't know. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the issue of host, which he hath determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear unto the issue of host. One shall be called the city of destruction. Now, stating in that day is sometime in the future. Uh, we're going to have to wait this out. In that day shall there be an altar to the Ishi in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Ishi. Now, I will ask. Earlier I read this wrong. But I'll show you what. I, was this the day or are we still waiting? Because This is an Egyptian obelisk. And instead of having writings all over it and pictures of it, it's as smooth as can be, uh, roughly likened to what the Most High says in, about an altar, no graven image, from, uh, uncarved stone, unhewn stone, right? Some of that. Nature. Now, I'm not saying it fits exactly, I'm just saying it seems kind of weird because when you get into the reflecting pool, I typed in is a reflecting pool an altar. And right now it's a waste of a search because the only thing that comes up is Marvel as Agatha's altar is a there's a pool, a reflecting pool, and some other entertainment writes that somebody else's altar is a reflection pool. So, I'm not sure if this is the Egyptian pillar and altar, meaning I'm not sure if that day happened or not. In that day there shall be an altar to the Ishi in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at border thereof. Now, if the pillar is at the border, and BC is on one end and all the way across the other, right? So it's at the border. So in the mist, mist would be middle, right? Something of that nature. So center. So I would presume that somewhere in the center of the land, 
there's a giant altar that's being called something totally different versus what is an Egyptian altar. Because that becomes a question. Now, again, for Assyria to be here, there has to be some kind of relation with them. Now, we've seen that somebody has to bring the people being classified as African slaves over to America. And the Europeans are claiming that w w they kicked us out of Europe, which we had no choice but to go into Africa. And they bought us from the Africans and then came to America and sold us to America. I mean, to, to the Indians. No. Sounds kind of fishy. So, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Ishi of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Ishi because of the oppressors. So again, that day could pass. And the result of that day could be them crying to the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior. Now, did that part happen yet? No. No. No, it didn't. Now, in that day, shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak to the land? Is, can that happen? Yeah. That, that could have already happened. The oppressor erected the Egyptian obelisk. Not the Egyptian, or not the American Indian, not the person, not the people who's supposed to be in possession of the land. Now, we gone over this very thing, the language of Canaan. All these cities had something in there called Canaan from the five tribes, specifically. We've seen this already. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt. It doesn't even say shall the Egyptian directly. We know that's the Philistine. This is actually America. And this part has nothing to do with Egypt. I mean with, with, with India. That's why this scripture is confusing because it goes back and forth over north and south. Excuse me, upper and lower. One to the Soan River and the other to what? The headquarters that used to be in Memphis ten, or, or, or North Georgia, Tennessee, Tennessee, Kentucky area. Memphis. And then they lost that where during the what the trail of tears when they still didn't learn a lesson and kept enslaving us and now it come to the point that now they cry they shall cry unto the ishi because the oppressors and he shall send them a savior a great one and he shall deliver them and that's what they wait on now. That's they delivering. Again, man, if you start studying what's happening on these reservations, it's just it's just projects. Some got it better, some don't. And the issue shall be known, oh, we got some jumping, to Egypt. And the Egyptians shall know the issue in that day and do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the issue and perform it. Does that happen yet? Not that we know of. 
and the Ishi shall smite Egypt. And he shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to the Ishi, and he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. And in that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the issue of hosts shall bless, saying, Be blessed, be Egypt, my people. Now, and is Syria the work of my hands, and Israel, Israel, El, mine inheritance? So, <clears throat> I think it's kind of self explanatory. Blessed be Egypt, my people, is going to deal with this right here. I somehow accidentally kept it highlighted. The sacrifice that they will do, the, the great one that will come as their savior, not as their God or anything like that, as their savior. They shall deliver them. That's a Messiah. Look. There go your Yasha. Y'all shawl. Y'all say this shit wrong. Y'all shay. Y'all shay. Y'all sha ah, ah, Something like that. Whatever. Wide free that is implication to be safe, cause to be free. He shall cause them to end their contracts with the United States. That's what it would mean for them to be free. How you say they defeated me and now I gotta live on a reservation, but I'm sovereign. You used to be able to go anywhere in your land and do anything you want. I'm I'm not trying to dog them, I'm just trying to prove a point. You're going to be their avenging, their, their avenger, their defender, their deliverer. You see how it is? Salvation. What, can, what are you going to do? They're going, they get a savior, and then the next thing they're going to do is sacrifice and do oblations. What is oblations? Appro appropriate. Appro a proportion bestowed a donation enthusiast with enthusiast enthusiastically enthusiastically tribute specifically a sacrificial offering usually bloodless and voluntary gift oblation they're gonna sacrifice when y'all still don't want to the corn sacrifice all right, so Leviticus chapter 2, the corn sacrifice. We don't have no Levites. He's going to send them a savior. They're going to sacrifice and do oblation. They're going to make a vow to him. Remember, previously, day's vows was with Lucifer. That's what it's saying in Isaiah 14. And now they turn to the Most High. Teach the wicked to turn to righteousness and perform it. And the issue shall smite Egypt, and he shall smite them and heal them. They're going to return even to the issue, and he shall be entreated of them, and he shall heal them. So that whole act 
or that series of acts, which has not happened yet, that's going to make them Egypt, but his people. He's going to poison them with an infection that cures them. Well, excuse me. Smut with a smite. It's a disease. And then he's going to cure them of what? Probably everything. Right there. Read it how you want to hear it. But you know, make sure you make make sure it makes sense. You know, for, for what the, the word is actually don't take it out of context. The word is actually saying. It's right there. And then what happens with the Assyrian? The Assyrians have been the work of his hand the whole time. If you need a highway to Assyria, the Assyrian is not here. The question is, where is the Assyrian? If he's in Africa, then they say it's a highway to Africa. If he go to Siberia, or if he's in Siberia, then that's a highway to Siberia. You know the rest. Look, everybody, I appreciate you viewing. I appreciate your viewership. Thank you for your donations. We eat. From your the lights are on because of your donation, you know. Uh, truly, from the bottom, from the middle, I guess I don't know. The bottom of the heart is where it pumps, so I guess that's where the most important part is. So. Thank you all, and to all, good night.